Okay, my name is Cy Young. I am the Senior Project Manager for Advanced Architectural Stone. Uh, today I'm going to go through uh, and explain a little bit about our procedure with our shop drawing process and how we coordinate the details of the cast stone manufacturing with the architect, engineer, um, and general contractor, uh, as well as the masonry contractor. Uh, I've got a few different project examples that I'm gonna walk through. Uh, the one I'm gonna start with is a cornice assembly or a band that goes around a structure that we ran into some design issues with the, the way the profile was designed originally. Now the detail that I'm showing right here is as you can see, it's 26 and 5 eighths inches tall. Uh, the amount of projection that's on this profile is considerable. It's got a lot of cantilever and wants to uh, rotate or tip forward. Uh, this project does have engineering in our, in our specifications, uh, which means we coordinate all of our details with the structural engineer uh, for attachment. Uh, the structural engineer, on af after our first submittal, will go in and design the structural hardware to, to tie back our material to the existing structure. Now, this is important to us so that we we provide curve slots and design our material around the attachments. Um, in this case, the profile uh, had a lot of, uh, again, had a lot of projection on it and a lot of rotation. And we, once we submitted this to the engineer, he then sent back marked up drawings for us based on his notes, what you see here, that the, the way that this piece wants to rotate is causing an issue with, with the size of it. So the recommendation was that we reduce the amount of projection on this profile to allow adequate anchoring. Um, what we came up with was what you see here, the dashed line represents the, the way the profile was designed originally. And then this, this hardware tie back. One of the issues we ran into was the way that the profile was designed, uh, it, it could have been clipped back, but the existing structure and the, 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 the framing structure that was there was not adequate to counter the weight of the rotation. So what we ended up with was reducing that profile to, as you can see here, minimize that rotation. Uh, and this is, as you can see, that this is a these pieces weigh about 200 pounds per linear foot. Uh, so that is just kind of an example of how the profiles need to be designed along with the structure to make sure that you know this is this can be adequately adequately attached to the to the building um, another example of the structural aspects of a this is on the same project this is a balustrade system that we detailed according to the architectural plans. This particular detail shows an L-shaped cornice piece with balustrade sitting on top. Well, one of the issues with this is that the balustrade has uh, got to be designed to, uh, it, it, it has to be structural. This is a uh, this is an accessible balustrade assist balustrade system that um, 
has to withstand 50 pounds per linear foot of outward force. So there has to be an internal stru uh, steel structure supporting this. Um, now there were a couple changes involved. One of, one of them being the, the lower cornice here, which was designed as an L-shaped piece is really difficult in the dry tamp process because it has to be compacted from the outer edge of the material. Uh, we have to have one open end of the form, which is the back side of this piece, which is concealed back in the wall. The top and front face of this are exposed. So the only side we can compact the mix into the form is from the back of the stone, which makes it difficult for us to flip the, the piece over in the manufacturing process. What we recommended and changed this design to was a two-piece cornice assembly with a joint. This allows us to compact the upper cornice piece from the bottom and the lower cornice piece from the back. Another driving factor on this was that the engineer, I'll open this, The engineer wanted rebar running perpendicular to the face of the material or, or perpendicular to the wall structure. In these markups, the engineer requested that rebar run horizontally perpendicular to the building which is difficult if we're compacting this from the back side of the piece right here he's got noted where he wants rebar number three rebar three equal spacing per piece well, in this, it's difficult from the from the backside in a dry pack system to get that running perpendicular. So, in changing this to a profile that compacts from the bottom, as we've revised it here, allows us to run the rebar this way and compact it from the bottom. Uh, another change to this balustrade system was that it's got to be structural. So these have a, a steel channel that spans between each newel pier with a steel post concealed inside the newel piers. Here you can see a little isometric with uh, the shown the four by four steel post with steel angles. This is just kind of an example of how we work directly with the structural engineer to resolve some of the structural issues and how to get the cast stone to basically adapt the cast stone to the structural aspects. Um, as well as the how we work out the structural issues and how that relates to the profiles and how they how we're able to manufacture those. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go on to the, I'm gonna give you an example of a project that has engineering uh, attachments Now this project is one that required engineering. What I'm gonna show you here is, this is our first shop drawing submittal showing all of the cut sections. Now, oh, I'm sorry, this, 
actually this is the this is the first submittal prior to the engineer looking at it we will submit this to the architect prior to the engineering uh, engineering the attachments on our first submittal we send our drawings without attachments uh, so that we if if any materials are eliminated or changed or, or profiles are changed in the submittal process that we're not engineering something that 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 is likely to change or, or possibly could change so after the first round of, round of submittals which is what this is uh and, and as you can see here we we actually in the submittal process before the architect had looked at this we had revised some of the profiles where they showed the material actually sitting up against the wall. We've got to have some airspace between the cast stone and the structure. So we reduced the depth of the profile slightly to allow for space between the back of the stone and the sheathing on the building. Um, some of these things make a difference when our engineer looks at it. So that's one of the reasons why we we don't on, on projects that we have engineering uh requirements on we don't provide those engineering attachments until after the first round of submittals once those markups come back from the architect we then send that we make the revisions send that on to our engineer and he'll mark those up and this is an example of his markups uh Right here, this is a this is an example of what we get back from the engineer, where he'll show all of the the clip attachments, where he'll go in and describe the size of the anchors, stainless. This this one, for example, he's got a one eighth inch by three inch wide stainless steel split tail head joints, there, uh, with three quarter inch stainless steel hilti screws. Uh, all of these notes that we get from the engineer are then transferred over to our submittal, our resubmittal drawings, where we'll go in and add these the uh, attachment details to our our drawings. Um, everything he he notes, we basically copy and put on our drawings, and then resubmit to the architect. Now, this particular project also required calc. Uh, calculation package. Uh, this is a an example of the engineer's calculations, showing all the uh, the calcs that he's got for every attachment on the building. And in these, our details are are referenced and enlarged, where he'll call out the clips and show all the calculations for for each clip attachment. Um, as you can see, they get, he gets pretty involved in, uh, in every detail of each piece. Uh, that pretty well wraps up this presentation. Um, if there are any questions regarding uh, structural design, profiles, how they re relate to the structure, uh, we're available to answer any questions. Here, I'll put our contact information on the screen here. Again, my name is Cy Young, uh, Project Manager with Advanced Architectural Stone. Our main office number is 817-572-0018. Um, if you have any questions, give us a call. Thank you.